Hey everyone, Taylor from Bridge Crew here, and I'm going to talk about our new fully revamped incidents page. So if you're familiar with our old one, we used to have the uh, all the different findings we had across build time and runtime all in one place. And now what we've done is we really separated those out. So you have your projects page for all your findings uh, in code, all the different scans that you've done across Terraform and CloudFormation, ARM, et cetera. And then you have your runtime incidents in your incident page. And this is where you have your AWS, Azure, GCP, and Kubernetes findings. And what we've done is we've separated those two. So now you have your code and your runtime issues completely separate. And then we've also completely redone the whole interface for the inter for um, incidents page. And what we've done is we focus the efforts on making sure it's easy to find and fix the higher issue. Uh, higher critical issue problems. So now you can focus on resolving the, the alerts that matter. And then second thing we've done is really focused on traceability. So this really helps with GitOps and following GitOps best practices, where you can find your runtime instance and trace it back to the code that caused that incident. That way you can resolve the issues in code, even if it was found in runtime, rather than resolving it in runtime and causing drift. So let's take a look. So here's our new fully revamped incidents page. And you can see right away some big changes. So the filter tool has been pulled out and it's now no longer a menu, it's actually fully uh, embedded. And you can see a lot of the filters you would expect, open, pass, suppressed, the source, runtime source, category, severity, I can filter by critical, high, medium, or low, the range for when that issue was discovered, relevant benchmarks and any tags. And then right here, you can see a new addition. So we have the ability, of course, to search through these different incidents, but we also have some quick buttons here, and these are to help you prioritize important issues. So you can see here the ones that are urgent. If I click on that, you can see it's now filtered to critical and high severity issues that were discovered in the last month, and they're unencrypted or public access issues in, um, in my runtime environments. I also have recent and traced and frequent and traced. And what this means is with our tracing tools. So this goes back to our your tool that has now been embedded in Bridge Crew. So with the your tool or the tagging bot, you will be able to add a, a unique tag identifier to all your resource blocks. And that will get carried over into runtime. So you'll now have a way to trace from runtime to build time for all your different resource blocks. And we take that and we use that information to help you follow GitOps best practices. We help you resolve issues from runtime in code. That way your code is up to date and it's not out of sync. Um, and it's also fully compliant, even if the issue was found in runtime. So I'm gonna show what that looks like. I can go here and click on the traced. And uh, you can see right away, I have a whole bunch of traced issues here. Uh, and the traced icon here will also show up wherever there's traced uh, issues. And then you can see once we're, once we're in here, I can even see um, issues that I can go back to the projects page. So here's one, ensure all EC2 instances are connected only by only to encrypted EBS volumes. Now, if I view this in the projects page, it's telling me it's gonna take me to the projects page. And I can see here's the repo where that issue occurs in code. And here's the exact issue in code. So now I know I need to go into this exact file to resolve the issue rather than resolving it in runtime. Now, heading back here, you can see a lot more detailed information where we have a detailed information about the actual asset itself, as well as any related resources. And this is based on our graph backend and a resource history. So what changes have been made to that resource? And then heading back up here, we have the ability to save filters as presets. So you can use those same filters again or export all this information as CSV so you can tackle it in whatever format you wanna use. And then over here, you still have the ability in runtime. So let me just turn off all these filters. 
you still have the ability in runtime to run do a fix. So I could fix this in runtime. Of course, I don't want to do that. I'd rather do it in code. Um, and then I can also go through and suppress these. And what's new here is I have, I can fill in some information. So let me just check a resource. I have to provide a justification now and I can do an expiration. So this could be filter, this could be suppressed for now, but I need to tackle it again in a month and uh, any more options here. So if I save that, then that will save the expiration date and that um, issue will pop up again in a few months or whatever I, I set that as. And so as you can see here, this is our fully revamped incidents page and all of it aligns to getting things solved fast, but also prioritizing the issues if you can't resolve everything. Finally, it's really important if you're following GitOps best practices to resolve whatever you can in code. And so we help a lot with that, with a lot of the built-in trace capabilities in here, where we can trace things from build from runtime back to build time, all in this incidents page. So you can find that issue for your AWS S3 bucket in runtime and resolve it in code, in the Terraform code that created the S3 bucket. That way it's in sync and solved. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you can try it out for yourself. Thanks.